What is up YouTube? In this video, I'm going to cover a full-fledged roadmap to become a data engineer. If you're new to this field of data and engineering, then this video is definitely up for you. It covers the, all the basic skill sets you need to become a data engineer and also advanced concepts. If you've seen my previous video, I've covered all these different skill sets which are there uh, in the field of like data and engineering in general. Uh, in this video, I've kind of created this really structured roadmap of 20 weeks. All right, on to this data engineering roadmap I prepared. There would be 11 sprints in general. Starts with the sprint zero. We're going to focus on the fundamentals. So it's divided into fundamentals one and fundamentals two. In fundamentals one, you're going to focus on Python and then data structures and algorithm. Python is like the most used language in, in the field of data, basically. Uh, all the data practitioners, data analysts, and data scientists are really used to use Python. Python has become epicenter of an ecosystem of data. So it supports all these different libraries, such as basic libraries, such as Pandas and NumPy, which helps you transform the data. There's, there are advanced machine learning libraries like Scikit-learn, uh, TensorFlow, PyTorch. I would not suggest any other language for a start. It's the most easiest, to, easiest language to get started with. Next is data structures and algorithm. Uh, even though, uh, like, I've heard a few questions around it. Why would a data engineer need to know data structures and algorithm? You don't even use it on a day-to-day -day basis. But the main concept uh, around knowing data structure and algorithm is for being a data engineer first, you need to be an engineer. So you need to think around that. You need to be like an engineer first. So any engineering uh, job or an interview has this uh, prerequisite in terms of solving data structure and algorithm problems. So you need to be able to solve these complex problems to become an engineer first. So you need to be an engineer first. Hence, data engineering in general consists of data structures and algorithm. So I'm also gonna cover that in the fundamental ones video, in the, which, which is upcoming next, but it will cover the basics uh, of the steps you need to kind of prepare data structures and algorithm for you to be able to cre clear these complex problems for interviews. I will cover a day basic strategy on how you should approach this. We will basically reference lead code uh, the key things is we're going to mainly cover easy and medium problems. So yeah, next, moving on to the next sprint, sprint one, which is fundamental two. Uh, in this, we're going to primarily focus on Linux language, like Linux commands, shell scripting. So basically, you need to be able to navigate around Linux environment. So shell scripting and Linux command are kind of important in this way because you are going to hop on to VMs, maybe in cloud or on-prem in your real life experience and kind of use these commands to navigate your way through. A few of the basic commands are like ls and cd. That's the first command you would ever type in a Linux machine. So yeah, in YouTube, uh, I will cover these in detail uh, in the Fundamentals 2 video. The other things I, need, I would cover in detail would be Git. Basically, in general, uh, a version control system that allows you to commit code and collaborate with teams. It's actually very important in the world of engineering in general. It's a standard practice. So yeah, I'm going to cover the basics on how this version control system kind of works. Other things I would like to cover in fundamentals is like the networking concepts. Uh, I also mentioned this in the previous video. So like what's it, what's a TCP, what's an IP, uh, how do you SSH into a system, all these kind of com concepts I would co cover. Moving on, sprint two, which is databases. So in this sprint, I, would, I really want to dedicate a full sprint, which is like two to three weeks uh, for, for you to figure out databases and SQL. SQL is like the most important language uh, who's, uh, for anyone who is dealing with data. So as you are interacting with a lot of these databases, eventually data warehouses, you need to really focus on your database fundamentals. You really need to understand how a database kind of works, uh, how you kind of navigate your way through data, how data is stored into databases, how it's replicated, how you query different kinds of data, how you model the data, how you provide a schema of data. I think this is very important because uh, you would be creating a lot of tables, a lot of schemas, like you would be designing, like as a data engineer in general, as a role, you would be designing these data models or at least looking into the different design patterns when you're like exploring different databases. So yeah, I'm gonna cover in detail, like uh, what are basically databases, different types of databases, which are relational, non-relational, there's a lot more types in terms of non-relational databases that I would, I would cover just briefly, just to give you an overview what kind of things really exist under this. Sprint three, we covered in detail like to help you understand fundamentals of data lakes, basically uh, how the whole process of storing lake data into lakes, basically huge chunks of data, uh, structured and unstructured data in a single place, and then data warehouses, which is more like a structured way of storing data at scale. 
So yeah, I will cover in detail, cover differences between them, OLAP versus OLTP. I will also cover in detail, like how you can create data lakes using uh, uh, public cloud services uh, in these cloud providers such as S3, GCS. Uh, I will also cover like data warehouses such as BigQuery, Redshift, ClickHouse. So I will cover in detail. This sprint should also consist of a small assignment on for you to help you create your first warehouse in a data lake. So I'll kind of give in the details, uh, maybe like a very small project. Uh, I would like to include in this part. All right, moving on, which is Sprint 4, Distributed Systems. The first concept you need to understand, what is big data? Uh, so basically, big data is data that cannot be processed in a single machine. You should consider it as one of the baselines. That's where the concept of distributed systems come in place. That is, instead of processing, processing data in a single machine, which is not possible due to the size, you kind of use a distributed system and a framework around it. And then you process this data in a way, uh, in a methodology which is called MapReduce uh, at scale, horizontally scaled basically. So there's a lot of cluster tech which is being used uh, in terms of the distributed systems that already exist in this public cloud provider. A few of the examples are like EMR, uh, uh, Dataproc, Databricks are basically help you scale your data processing jobs for big data using distributed systems. Moving on to Sprint 5 which is data processing. Processing data at scale on distributed system introduces its own set of complexities. We're going to cover in detail uh, the different frameworks, we need different separate kind of frameworks um, to kind of process this data and navigate around distributed systems. One of the core jobs of a data engineer is to kind of process this data, clean the data, transform the data, and then put it into the right place. So a lot of this process have happens using different types of frameworks or uh, we'll be using Python language to kind of process this data using different frameworks. So we will cover like Spark, we will cover like SQL, Spark SQL, we will also cover like basic processing frameworks such as Pandas, we will also cover like uh, different types of data processing, batch processing, streaming processing. I will also cover like Apache Beam which uh, is another open source framework for you to build uh, data pipelines. Uh, the next step is orchestration. This is also like a core part of a data engineer's job. One of the most important tool in this space is Airflow and Basically, as a data engineer, I almost daily work with this tool to build my pipelines and orchestrate my different pipelines of tasks. So yeah, you basically create uh, direct acyclic graphs or DAGs, that's what we call them. Uh, so you connect all these different tasks uh, in terms of what is going to be executed parallelly series, uh, in a series. So you kind of build this graph of uh, execution tasks, uh, which basically lay out different steps of your pipeline. I would be showing you how you can run uh, Airflow locally. Also, you can do how you can deploy it on a virtual machine. So yeah, uh, we will also, I will also cover a bit few other tools such as Luigi, Nephi, Jenkins, which are basically counterparts of Airflow. Moving on, which is the Sprint 7, is backend frameworks. Moving on to the Sprint 7, which is backend frameworks. So basically, sometimes you need to serve your models or some functionalities in place. So that's where you kind of need backend frameworks. Uh, to kind of serve them as API. So that is going, what I'm going to cover in this sprint. So we will learn about like how the backend APIs kind of exist, what protocols like it uses, and how you can easily build an API with different frameworks. So I'm probably going to cover a few frameworks in this one, which is like Flask and Fast API. So moving on then is automation and deployments for a data engineer. And this is also like a very important skill set which is required. So you can build things, you can build pipelines, but the idea is you also need to deploy these pipelines, you need to deploy APIs. So that's where this step kind of uh, comes in. You automate everything and kind of deploy it. So one of the first things we would cover containerization, which is with Docker. So I will also cover like infrastructure as code, how you can deploy your infrastructure using code, using Terraform. I will also create a small project using Terraform and Civil uh, to deploy. Uh, to provide an automation and deployment sample project for you to explore. So I will cover this step in more like a hands-on way. I will cover concepts plus uh, a hands-on small project uh, in this step. All right, moving on, the next is front-end and dashboarding. So yeah, uh, this, uh, this step also overlays uh, with the role of visualization engineer who like creates uh, dashboards or data analysts who create dashboards. So yeah, it kind of overlaps with that, but I think Skills around front end and dashboarding are actually good to have. At least you should know some basics of it because, in case if you want to showcase your data, showcase your result in the right format to the stakeholders or even to uh, the tech stakeholders, I think it's uh, using a dashboard or maybe a small front end application is kind of a good way to showcase what you've built. 
So yeah, I would like to cover that in detail on how like different tools can be used to achieve that. One of the good dashboarding tools are like Tableau and Power BI, which are like paid tools, but are really widely used amongst different uh, business organizations. You can also use other open source frameworks to showcase uh, your data and output. Uh, you can use frameworks such as Streamlit, Dash, and Plotly. Uh, these are like open source frameworks where you like write code in Python. You can build these apps in Python uh, to build this like small front end or small, small proof of concept. The last sprint, uh, which is machine learning. In general, one of the key uh, key thumb rules is that you would be working with a lot of these data scientists and machine learning engineers learning small concepts few concepts around machine learning is actually a good to have you will be working with your fellow uh, data practitioners who are actively using these tools so I think it's good to know that these tools exist but yeah an overview is kind of good enough uh, maybe nothing more than that for now so yeah this is it uh, we have covered 11 sprints starting from 0 to 10 uh, maybe I would add a few more, more sprints later on once I'm building these videos one by one so you can expect at least these 11 videos from me uh, that may or may not be broken down to for the videos so we will go as we figure out things this series is so far looking really good to me uh, for now we have all these different steps and upcoming videos I'm going to be starting with the first video which is fundamental one uh, probably next week or the week after so yeah, stay tuned for that. Apart from that, I think that's about it in terms of this video. Uh, if you really gained value out of this, definitely hit the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. It really helps me promote my channel to people like you.